Now let's talk about transformation arithmetics. Uh, we're going to learn a few things here about transformations. Uh, the first thing is the compound transforms. So if we have multiple transformations together, how do we do that? Uh, for example, if we look here, we have frames A and B and C. Okay, Each frame is defined relative to the previous frame. So frame B is, is defined relative to frame A using this transformation matrix, TB relative to A. And then frame C is defined relative to frame B, uh, which is T of C relative to frame B. Okay, now we have a point P here, and this point is, is defined relative to frame C. Okay, so that's blue line here, and that blue line vector is a vector of point P relative to frame C that you see here. And what I need to find is I need to find the definition of P relative to frame A. Okay, as you can see, there are multiple transformations along the way. So how do we deal with that? Okay, as you can see here, you can define P relative to A, this right here. If you define this times this times this. Okay, as simple as that. So P relative to A, and since we have transformation matrices, all of them are four by fours. That means my uh, vector here since it's 3 by 1, I have to add 1 at the bottom, so it can make it 4 by 1 for consistency, okay, for both of these. So P, A relative, uh, P relative to A and 1, that's a 4 by 1, equals to the first uh, transformation matrix here is T, B relative to A. So I put here T, B relative to A, times T, C relative, to, uh, I'm sorry, to T, C relative to B. So I put this here, TC relative to B, okay, times C or P relative to C right here. This is P relative to C and 1 so that we can make it a 4 by 1 vector, okay. And I just want you to note here that this combination of these two, these two transformations together gives me T of C relative to A, okay. So that would be a vector from here to here directly, okay. And again, if you want, if you think about this, uh, just to know the order of these transformation matrices and multiplications, uh, think about them in, in your mind as uh, there's a fraction here, and anything in the top is your numerator, and the bottom is the denominator. In that case, B cancels with B, okay? And then this C up cancels with this C down, and what's left is A. And that's what we have as the results right here. Okay? So uh, this is the compound transform uh, when, when we have more than one transformation matrix and we need to uh, get the compound transform out of these to find the definition of P relative to frame A. Let's take an example here. Frame B is rotated relative to frame A about Z axis by 30 degrees and translated 4 units in XA and 3 units in Y in y, y axis. And then frame C is rotated relative to frame B about X axis by 60 degrees and translated 6 units in X axis and 5 units in the Z axis. And then what we need to do is find the position of point P relative to frame A if P relative to frame C equals to 8, 7, and 9 transpose. So to start with the solution first I need to find the transformation matrix of B relative to A. That's the first portion of this question what's given. So the first portion is defining B relative to A which has rotation about Z by 30 degrees. So that rotation portion is about Z by 30 degrees. Okay so that means I have 1 here and zeros and zeros in the remainder elements uh, in the same row and column, and then cosine, negative sine, and sine and cosine of 30 degrees. That defines my rotation matrix inside of my transformation matrix. And then for the translation portion, I have to find P of B origin relative to A, which is given right here, 
translated four units in XA and three units in YA. So that's four and three. And of course, since there's no mentioning of Z, that makes this zero. And then the standard last row would be 0, 0, 0, and 1. Okay, so that defines TB relative to A. Now, the second portion of this question, I can use it to define T of C relative to B. It says here, frame C is rotated relative to frame B about X axis by 60 degrees. So that's a rotation about X axis by 60 degrees. Which means that the 3 by 3 rotation portion of this matrix would be 1 here and then zeros in the remainder elements of the same row and column. And then cosine, negative sine, and sine and cosine of 60 degrees. Okay, I put the numerical values for them right here. And then the second portion here is for the translation, which is P, C origin relative to frame B, which is defined right here in the question. Uh, this frame C relative to B translated six units in X axis and five units in Z axis. Okay, so that's six units in X axis and five in Z axis. Since there's no mentioning of the Y axis, that means uh, it's zero. Okay, and then the last row here is zero, 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 one as the standard thing we do here. All right, now that we have uh, T B relative to A and T C relative to B, I can go ahead and construct my equation to find P relative to A. And I add one here so that we can make this vector four by one for consistency. Uh, and that equals to T B relative to A times T C relative to B multiplied by P relative to C and one to make this vector again four by one so that it would be consistent with the transformation matrices that are four by four, okay? Since I found those, these two already, I just go ahead and substitute them here. And then I substitute P relative to C, that's given directly here, right there. And then this one is added as we see uh, what we have done right here. If you multiply these uh, two matrices and the vector, then we come up with this four by one vector. That's 18.27, 6.28, and 15.56. And of course we have one here that we need to get rid of so that we can get the final answer using the three elements in here, okay? So this would be my final answer that defines P relative to A as requested by this question. Now let's talk about the inversion of a transformation matrix, inverting a transform. Uh, first, I would like to uh, give you a reminder here about the rotation matrices. Uh, we talked about rotation matrix matrices er earlier uh, that if we have rotation of B relative to A, it would be equal to rotation of A relative to B inverse, which is also the same as rotation of A relative to B transpose. So the inverse and transpose of rotation matrices is the same. Now this is only valid for rotation matrices. Unfortunately, it's not valid for uh, transformation matrices. Okay. Now for transformation matrices, we have a formula that we can use uh, to get the inverse uh, of a transformation matrix. Okay, so this formula here, if we have transformation of A relative to B, it will be equal to the transformation of B relative to A inverse. So when you uh, reverse the order of B and A, you get the inverse of the transformation matrix. Okay, and in that case, uh, we have this formula here, and this is only valid for transformation matrices where we can put the rotation of B relative to A, that portion of the transformation matrix, and we transpose it. And then here, for this three by one vector, we can put negative of the rotation portion of B relative to A transpose, multiplied by P of B origin relative to A, okay? All of these information are already uh, existing in T of B relative to A, all right? And then the bottom here, we still have the standard format, which is 0, 0, 0, and 1. All right? Now, this does not equal to T B relative to A transpose. Okay? The inverse and transpose are not equal when it comes to the transformation matrices. So make sure you don't get uh, the transpose of the transformation and assume it's uh, the inverse of the transformation. All right? 
Now let's take an example on uh, this inversion of a transformation matrix. Frame B is rotated relative to frame A about Z axis by 30 degrees and translated 4 units in XA and 3 units in YA. Find the transformation matrix that describes frame A relative to frame B. Now I want you to pay attention to this here. Usually we are asked to find the transformation matrix that describes B relative to A. In here, you're asked to find the transformation matrix that describes A relative to B. So that's the opposite of what you're usually asked to find, which means that we have to invert uh, the transformation matrix that defines B relative to A. So to start the solution first, we need to find the transformation matrix that defines B relative to A, and then we can invert that matrix to find the transformation matrix that defines uh, A relative to B. So T, B relative to A equals 2. Since we have rotation here about Z axis by 30 degrees, that means we have rotation about Z axis by 30 degrees. So the rotation portion of the transformation here, we have 1 at the bottom right and zeros and zeros and the remainder elements of the same row and column. And then we have cosine, negative sine, and sine and cosine of 30 degrees which I put their values here, numerical values. Now, P, B origin relative to frame A, is also given here. Uh, translated 4 units in X axis and 3 units in Y axis. So that's 4 and 3. And since there's no mentioning of the Z axis, that means it's 0. And then the bottom is always as standard. Uh, we use 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay? So that defines transformation of B relative to A. Now, if I want to find transformation of A relative to B, which is the opposite of this, then I need to use the formula that we mentioned earlier. Okay? The first thing is I need to find or get this rotation matrix of B relative to A, transpose it, and place it right here. Okay? So this is the rotation portion, as you can see. I put it here and I put transpose, so I can transpose it. And then minus, this is, this is a 3 by 3 here, and then this a 3 by 1 would be negative of the transpose of the rotation matrix, transpose of this 3 by 3, multiplied by uh, PB origin relative to frame A, which is 4, 3, and 0, right here. Okay? This 4, 3, and 0 is put right here and multiplied by the transpose of the rotation matrix. Okay? And then the bottom we still have 0, 0, 0, and 1 here. So if I transpose this, I uh, put every row into column and every column into row. So that's that would be my transpose of this rotation matrix. And then I can put the same transpose of the rotation matrix, but with a negative sign. Okay, since we have a negative sign here. So all the numbers here are the same numbers, but they're the opposite signs. And that is multiplied by 4, 3, and 0. Now finally, if I calculate all of these things, I'm going to come up with uh, these numbers. So this will be the rotation portion and this will be the translation portion for this transformation matrix. Okay? And if I evaluate these numbers, I'll get these uh, numbers for the translation and that would define the transformation of A relative to frame B. Now we want you to know here that this inverse of the transformation is not the same as the transpose of the transformation. Okay, look at this. If you transpose this, it does not give you this. Okay, transpose means that rows become columns and columns become rows, uh, which will not be equal to the inverse of the transformation matrix. Now let's take an in-class exercise. I'd like you to do this on your own. Find T A relative to B if T B relative to A equals to this 4 by 4 matrix. Okay, so I would like you to invert this transformation matrix using the formula that we talked about. And I'm going to pause here for a few seconds. Please pause the video and try to do it yourself. Once you are done, you can resume the video and see the answer. Okay, now I'm going to assume that you are done with 
uh, inverting the transformation matrix to find T A relative to B when you are given T B relative to A. Uh, so the solution to this matrix is this matrix that you see. Please try to see if that matches the solution that you found on your own. If it does not match, you can go back and check what you have done wrong uh, and go make sure that the formula that you have is correct.